Today, I'm going to continue talking about connecting PowerShell commands together via the pipeline. Now, if you haven't watched episodes 7, 8, or 9, and you're not familiar with how the pipeline works and how the binding process works, go ahead and watch those episodes first. In this example, what I'm trying to do is take the results of get AD computer, which should pull in a bunch of computers from Active Directory, and pipe those to a command called get computer data, which should pull up basic system information. But when I run this, you'll see that the binding process doesn't work, and it gives all these errors. And just like we did in episodes seven and, or eight and nine, we'll go ahead and take a look at the help documentation on the commandlet that is actually receiving the input and look at what parameters accept pipeline input. And there's a couple parameters here, computer name and error log. Excuse me, let me scroll back up. And you'll see that computer name parameter accepts pipeline input by property name. And what that means is if the object in the pipeline has a property called computer name, uh, the parameter computer name will bind to that value. So the next step is to actually take a look at the output that get AD computer produces to look at the properties that it produces. And you'll see here that there's a bunch of different properties, but you'll see the computer name. There's a computer name here and a computer name here. But the property is called name and not computer name. So no matter how much we want that to work, the binding process will never work because the property name, computer name, does it can't bind to the property name. But luckily in PowerShell, there is a fairly simple workaround. And that's by creating custom properties on the fly. So how we do that is we use the select object command. And what we can do here is take the results of the get AD computer. We'll pipe that to the select, select object commandlet. And then we'll select whatever properties we want. And in this case, I'll accept all the, I'll go ahead and accept all the properties. And then we're going to create a custom property right here. And how we do that is by using a special hash table with certain keys. Now in this hash table, we have to have a couple keys. One's called name and the other is called expression. We could also use label here instead if you want. That's also an accept acceptable key. Or if we wanted to, we can shorten just down to the first letter. And that would work as well. But what we have here is the name here. This is the name of the new property that we want to create. The expression is the value of that property name. And what we're going to actually do is evaluate a existing property name or property value to load that. So what we have here is basically a script block. And if you're not familiar with this, the dollar underscore underscore stands for the current object in the pipeline, and we're going to access the name property. So what we're going to do is load the existing name property into this new custom property called computer name. And if we run this, we will see that there is now a computer name property with our computer name on both our records here. So with that, the binding process should now work if we pipe those results to get computer data. And if I run this here, and you can see that worked. And this pulled some basic computer information, such as the uh, serial number, manufacturer, things like that. Now, this is kind of one scenario that you can use when the binding by property name, um, where the names don't match up. But there's also a scenario that you'll probably run into where you're going to try to connect commands together. And you'll find out when you look in the help documentation that none of the parameters accept pipeline input. But there's another workaround for that as well, and I will talk about that in an upcoming episode. Thank you for watching.